Informed Sources is made possible in part by Susie and Pierre G. Villery. With a continued passion for public television, we are proud to underwrite Informed Sources. Please join us in supporting WYES Television. Hello, I'm Marcia Kavanaugh. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, if it is true that a picture is worth 1,000 words, we have at least 10,000 words worth of visuals to show and discuss as we review the year through the eyes of a Pulitzer Prize award-winning cartoonist. Joining us are Errol Laborde, producer of Informed Sources, and Walt Handelsman, editorial cartoonist for the Times-Picayune, the New Orleans Advocate. What a way to end our year, <laughs> but having Walt. And this is your first time on Informed Sources. It We've is. Been on all this. It is. Such a delight to have you here for Thank this you. year end of review show. And to see it through your eyes is really going to be a delight. So it's just going to be a great half hour for you. You know, Errol was talking, you know, before we started uh, with the show, saying, where'd you go to school? Did you go, to, were you trained? Is there a cartoon school or something? How did you become this? Well, there, there isn't a cartooning school, at least there wasn't when I started. Um, so I went to school, I went to college, and I got a degree in advertising. I grew up in Baltimore, and I went back to Baltimore and got a job in a small ad agency. And I liked it all right, but I really wanted to do, wanted to do more creative stuff. And I was always enamored by cartoons in general and political cartooning. And so I would work all day in the ad agency and then come home at night and try and draw a cartoon, mm -hmm. which were awful. <laughs> um, they were really big, and this was during the Reagan, early Reagan years. So I was just sort of trying to figure out my way of drawing cartoons, coming up with ideas, and eventually put together enough of a kind of portfolio of 10 or 15 cartoons, and then I went out to a bunch of a little weekly newspapers in Baltimore, and I actually got a couple of them to run my cartoons, and so the, the, the spark was lit. But everyone that I know in the cartooning business is self-taught. And so. so when did you come then down to New Orleans to with the Times-Picayune? So oh. I worked in Baltimore um, at a chain of weekly newspapers in Columbia, Maryland, back in, the, in 1982 to 85, and then I got my first job as a full-time cartoonist at a daily at the Scranton Times in 1984, 85. And I worked there for three and a half years. And then Mike Lukovich, my good friend Mike, left here mm -hmm. to go to Atlanta. And I applied for his job. And so that was in 1989. And was that with the Times Picayune? You yes. came to the Times Picayune. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, we sure are glad you came down here, and so, that you came back too, because you you did leave for a while and then came back to New Orleans. I did. I did. We, I got an incredible job offer in New York to go work at Newsday, and um, we loved. I, I loved the newspaper. It was a, it's a huge newspaper, but we really missed New Orleans from the time we left, and we were there for twelve years. So it was, mm. we came back a lot. Um, of course, came back right away after Katrina and came back several times to help yeah. people. And um, as diehard Saints fans, we watched from afar as the Saints built through 2006 up into 2009. Mm -hmm. So that was all very magical. And when the Times-Picayune imploded in 2012 uh, and John George's purchased The Advocate, um, I was interested in coming back and I thought it would be a good time in my career to come back. We had missed New Orleans all this time, so it happened. And I was able to come back in 2013. E, did, you, did you have a question? No, I, well, I was going to say, when you mentioned like Mike Lukovich, he also won Pulitzer. So between the two of you, yeah. if, you if you guys go out drinking beers, man, you can be talking about your, <laughs> your, your prizes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Let's talk about your process, and then we're going to start looking at, okay. at, at some of the ones that you've done for mm -hmm. us this year. I mean, how, how do you think of all this stuff? Well, I've trained my brain over a period of many years to sort of think in cartooning terms and to never really turn off the, um, the flow of news coming in, because you really need topics, obviously, 
things that everyone is is aware of. Um, and so my process is to get up in the morning, um, read the paper here, go online, read what's online, also read national stories and and look at all different newspaper websites online and try and compile a list of the things that I think will be the best topic for the next day. Now that's not a cartoon idea, but it's just mm -hmm. trying to sort of weed it down to what is, what will people be talking about? And um, then the process of trying to figure out my point of view, um, how do I want to be uh, satirical about this? Is it going to be uh, punchline driven? Is it going to be a drawing that mm -hmm. says it all without any words? Right. And, it, we'll, and we'll see one like that as we go. <clears throat> Let's start. Let's start with our first one right okay. now. Can you bring that up, Mike? There we go. So obviously LaToya, the mayor, has been uh, under fire th basically throughout the year and in many ways throughout much of her term uh, as mayor. And the, it sort of, obviously this is a Halloween related cartoon, so whenever you have themes, whether it's um, the New Year's baby or Christmas or Halloween here, we have Mardi Gras and Jazz Fest, it's nice to incorporate them in. So I wanted to do a cartoon about um, the big problem that she had with the travel upgrades right. to first class, the excuses for it, and the trouble she had, and she wasn't going to pay it back, then she did. And then the whole story about uh, living in the Pantabla. Your hand. And then um, the recall. Right. So there's all this stuff sort of and, hanging over her. And, and these and, were all more recent problems, which I think is good because that you tied in with Halloween, because I think part of the story of the administration is like this segment of it where there's been one thing after the other. I mean, mm -hmm. the first four years were okay. And so it kind of shows, since Halloween, things have been bad, you know, so. Well, it's, it's also, it's, you know, again, I'm trying to come up with ideas on topics that people are aware of. Right. And um, so everyone is pretty much aware of these topics. And it was a chance to touch on all of them in a single cartoon and to also do what I consider a fun drawing using right. the, Halloween stuff. So. How long does it take for you to come up with these, I, you know, with the drawings to get it done? I mean, the ideas are what take the longest. Mm -hmm. So I started around 8.30 and I like to have an idea approved by the editors by anywhere between 12 and 1 o'clock. My deadline is around 4.30, so I need to, I'm on the clock every day, which is, I think, the hardest part of the <laughs> job. Creating stuff is fun. Uh, looking up at the clock when you basically have nothing. This happened to me the other day. At This happened to me on like two days ago on Monday and, and it was like 10.30 and I didn't really have anything. I had some general ideas of what I thought might work and sometimes I just have to put them down. I draw them quickly with a ballpoint pen and I mm -hmm. scan them into my computer and then just put them aside and start looking at other things. But amazingly, by the time deadline came around, I showed my editor four cartoons and he liked three of them, which mm -hmm. I ended up drawing all three of them this yeah. week. So it went from like a disaster day, <laughs> totally panicking, to like a phenomenal day. <laughs> and I just, I never know. For one thing, it's a very insular job. So I'm looking at this stuff and I work at home. So my wife Jody helps me, I'll call her in and say, can you look at these eight ideas? Do any of them, you know, work? Do you think? So um, it is a, it is an anxiety or a nervous, <laughs> morning every day looking at the clock and it's very rare that a cartoon cartoon idea just pops into your head. Well Jody does a really good job in guiding she, you then. She, she does, does a great, great job. job. Okay She's and you know and this show generally the end of the uh, the year show you know it's a it's a wrap up of mm -hmm. what are what are the important stories what, what's mm -hmm. our year been like mm -hmm. so once again we're taking a look at it through Walt's cartoon so let's mm -hmm. go to the second one. And that one, of course, is something regarding the saints. Well, I mean, this is a funny thing about living and working here. So the saints are such a dominant news item here. It really, for us, we, we're big saints fans, and all my friends are. So when the saints win, it's a nice Monday. It's a fun Sunday. And um, it gives you hope for later on in the season, especially coming off of all those phenomenally great years. Right. So. You know, I hate to be a naysayer, uh, especially about the Saints, but um, when Dennis Allen came out of the locker room after the, um, 
we had thrown two pick sixes in a minute and a half. And I mean, every Saints fan was furious mm -hmm. and just sort of questioning how in the world can that happen? And he kind of famously came out in a halftime interview and said, they said, well, what did you say in the locker room? And he said, I just told him to keep doing what you're doing. And I'm like, <laughs> what? So <laughs> right. I just, you know, the idea of a, a flipped over driving school and, uh, and it got a lot of reaction online. So <laughs> the Saints it's... cartoons generally do, which is funny. Okay, moving along with our year as seen through the eyes of Walt, what do we have next? So this oh, is a yeah. big recurring topic. I think one of you asked me if there are topics that are recurring. Yeah. Unfortunately, in New Orleans, recurring topics many times have to do with crime. And, and also in Louisiana, um, and really in the whole Gulf South, this idea of the cost of flood insurance and the availability of flood insurance yeah. and then these incredible rate increases so I've done a lot of cartoons on this, and this is another one of those topics where it touches me as well. I mean, we live here, yeah. and so you get an opportunity to sort of vent your frustration with a topic like this. I've done a lot of cartoons in the past about the sewage and water board where we've been very frustrated on a personal level and we see what's happened throughout the city. Right. So it's nice to be able to touch on those things. So this and it was a fun drawing. It was, you it, know, kind of a dynamic. It's a great, drawing. yeah, it's a great drawing. And relax, you'll be phased in. Right. Uh-huh, we can't relax too much about that. No. Okay, where are we now? Let's go to the next one. So <laughs> I've done a lot of cartoons about uh, gun violence nationally, and I've done a lot of cartoons about gun violence here in New Orleans. It's such a numbing thing. It's um, really shocking when you look at individual cases and at the whole, um, it's hard to imagine that we can become numb to this, but it, it's, I mean, when I read the headlines every day in the paper, I'm still shocked by the number of shootings uh, and the lack of any sort of real clear way to, right. to help this. And think, go ahead, Ian. I was saying, I think what's interesting is this pair of eyes that's peeking out. Right. All it is is two circles with dots, but yet, you can tell the fear uh, uh, right there, just the way it's drawn, just the way the yeah. eyes appear. Right, and then also, yeah, if we can bring it back, to see those bullets zinging around. I mean, yeah. Really, that was not just, I don't think, in your imagination. Unfortunately, it's in our imagination as a community. And the other that. thing is, when you do a cartoon like this, like there are some cartoons that are just flat out supposed to be funny, you know, sort yeah. of um, celebrating living in this area or something funny nationally. But there's so many, especially in the last couple of years, so many sad commentaries that you're making and you want to make sure that people recognize that you're absolutely not making fun of this, that this is supposed to be sort of, you know, touching and scary and pithy at the same time. Same time. Okay, and this <clears throat> next one also, um, it's one that does have a couple of words at the bottom, but this was another thing that had happened, a, a person who we lost this year, of course, former mayor, Moon Landrieu, and this is such a, a poignant and touching cartoon. Well, thank you. I, I thought of the idea when I was, I mean, it's such an unusual name, and mm -hmm. I kind of knew him a little bit, and I obviously knew his son uh, when he was mayor, and also just from being in New Orleans for many years. Um, and it came to me, and I thought, well, this would be kind of a nice dramatic drawing, and I read all of the, the accolades and the the pieces in his obit and really refreshed myself on all the amazing things that he had done. So I was glad that, that I did the cartoon um, and I think it definitely struck a nerve with people in New Orleans and so worked out well. And, and, the, and the phrase, good night moon, uh, yeah. is, is so dynamic, it it's is. really good. Yeah. You know, yeah. also the title of a classic children's book. Yeah, and then on the moon, uh, what moon Landrieu was so well known for mm -hmm. and respected for, the mm -hmm. civil rights champion, mm -hmm. compassionate, visionary, courageous, and honorable. Just a beautiful, beautiful cartoon. Okay, now, this is a, this is a fun one. This, this is definitely is a, fun a fun one. one. This is something that the city has really been joyous about yeah. and maybe didn't fully expect to happen. Right, well this was drawn before they won their division and before the, uh, their conference and before they were assigned to a, to a bowl game but when they were put in the top 25, which I think they ended like 18, so yeah. they went even yeah, higher. Yeah, and of course we're talking about Tulane Greenway. Tulane Greenway, Football. right. So again, that's sort of um, hyper-local to New Orleans, but everybody in the state follows football so closely. And I thought it would be nice um, to do a tribute to them. And of course, anytime you can draw 
a wave and boats, <laughs> then you hit a home run in Louisiana. So in, in, just... in the '98 season, you referred to was the last time they referred in the top right. top twenty in the right. event. Right. They won the right. Liberty Bowl that year. With them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how you managed to do it, Walt. But I mean, <clears throat> this wave has character. You know, it looks <laughs> well, like you it's know, smiling. I, I draw my cartoons in black and white, a pen and ink using markers, and ink and uh, little ballpoint pens. But then I scan them into the computer, and we used to the cartoons just always just be in black and white for years, and then in the early 2000s, papers got the capability to print in all color, so I started using uh, Photoshop, which is a lot of fun, and you 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 do have so I mean this drawing was rather simple in black and white. It was just these wave lines going up, and the little boat and the people in it, yeah, and then so everything else gets added in Photoshop, which is fun for me. I gotta say, once the cartoon idea is approved, the rest of the day is a joy because it's just the creative process yeah. and the pressure is off so you can enjoy yourself, unless you're running late, in which case you have to draw quickly. <laughs> okay, <laughs> another feel-good one, a uh, feel-good cartoon, because certainly this has been big news, you know, this, that, certainly, what, the, the last half of this year, and there's still a search on by everybody. I went to a Zapata's grocery <laughs> store the other day, we're out of you big, big spies, you know, on, on the door. It's People are looking for It's one of those cultural it. references, and I, again, I did, I, I sent you guys a lot of sports cartoons. Of course, I do cartoons on all kinds of serious topics, but I thought these would be fun to look at. But again, with all the problems with the Saints this yeah. year, I thought this would be a good way to put a Hubix pie in a cartoon. I had, I had another idea with um, someone is in their house and there are hundreds of boxes of Hubix pies. I cannot mm -hmm. remember. That's something to do with Thanksgiving. I don't remember what it was. A nice drawing, but I think yeah. this one was more what I was looking for. And I, I think thought. you really nailed that label too of the, the Hubix pie itself. <laughs> I mean, that right. in itself is that's hard to draw. And yeah. The little guy, <laughs> yeah, you can just put the highlights in. You can't yeah. really do the details when it's that small. That's Savory Simon, the Hubix pie. Man. Yes, anyway. it is. It was one that makes us hungry too. We want to go out and get a Ubix pie. Okay, this one is really fun now too. And this one's, you know, from sort of a latter part of 2022, but right. a real big deal when we had the president of France visit New Orleans. We did. And I had some thoughts about he traveled to get here, and I thought, do I want to do something about the mayor with the travel problems? And I decided not to do that because I knew that this was like a big moment for the city and. I wanted to do something with like true New Orleanians, like where you at, you know, how's your mom and them? <laughs> yeah, you're right. right. Which to me, I just love <laughs> that whole aspect of being in New Orleans. And I love the idea that the translator is just like flummoxed. There's no <laughs> clue. Everybody that lives here that read that know exactly what it was. And, and this is another one where people really liked it. I got a lot of comments and a lot of um, reaction on social media. I'm sure so, because those are <clears throat> endearing phrases that yeah. are part of our culture. This is a quick you know, side. Part I, of talk our life. Some, I talked to someone who talked to Macron in Cajun French, mm -hmm. and of course the language is this, but uh, it says that the French really like Cajun French because to them it's like French that's just bird in time. Mm -hmm. It's like Shakespearean English to them. So, ah. So uh, Macron heard a lot of accents when he was there. Interesting. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, and the next one now, this is an, an international story, of course, that's part of year 2022, mm -hmm. and a, a very touching one about Ukraine Well, I did resolve. a lot of cartoons about um, Russia and Ukraine, and of course I did a lot of cartoons about Trump, and I did cartoons about Biden, and lots of cartoons about Congress, and um, so the, I like this particular cartoon because uh, I just feel like all of us can admire uh, the Ukrainian people and the strength that they've shown, Absolutely. that their leader has shown. Um, the courage and, and the bravery of the right. people, yeah. And um, this came after a particularly awful weekend of bombing. So, I, I, you know, again, certainly not a funny cartoon, but yeah. hopefully uh, uplifting and, and a way to show, you know, my admiration and I think represent our admiration for what and this is a, a war where everyone in the United States is united you know so there's no really division on this and Zelensky is such a, an heroic figure right so I would like to think that that's true although I've heard 
plenty of people complain that we're too deeply involved and I think well, there's wrong. financial concerns, but I mean, in terms of emotionally, I think the people are united, you know. And the, this yeah. cartoon uh, is really dramatic in the way you represent the color. This was a cartoon with no color except mm -hmm. for the flag. The flag, yeah. The whole cartoon, even though it was done in Photoshop and is shaded. Um, and the funny thing is, so my work is nationally syndicated to 200 plus newspapers. And I had quite a few cartoons reprinted this year in the Washington Post. And for some reason, and it's, it's in the newspaper, but it's also online with them. And for some reason, when they're online, they only print them in black and white. Oh, really? And they did this one. So the only thing that I had in color wasn't in color. In color. Nobody cared or knew. I cared and knew because I thought it would be, I thought it was interesting in the paper to see the whole thing in black and white with just that. But anyway. Um, and so let's go on to the next one. It's interesting what you said that they only printed, I mean, posted in black and white because on online you can get such vivid I know, and they do that reality. every week with a roundup of cartoons. Yeah. And a lot of times the people, they have a big following obviously and they have a big cartoon following there. And a lot of times if they'll run a particular cartoonist, someone will comment by saying, here's a link to their cartoon on their own website no. that's in color if you want to see it in color, so not is, mine. But And that was an important one to have the, yeah. the color and not. Okay, here we go. Now still in the Ukrainian theme. Mm -hmm. So when Zelensky was named Time of the, uh, Times Person of the Year and Ukrainian people were named People of the Year. Mm -hmm. um, and I, had, I wanted to do this came very quickly to me. Um, I debated whether to use slime or crime, and my editor said, you should use crime because there's been so much discussion of war crimes, which I thought was a good point. Mm -hmm. And so then it was just a matter of looking at the cover and doing a little more of a serious caricature than a cartoony caricature, if you will. But I, I like this cartoon a lot. I like cartoons that are, the simpler the better. I like, the, I like the way you do Putin's eyes. And, and yeah. from thinking of cartoons, I realized how important the eyes are in terms of getting the measure of that's a, that's a neat, both evil eyes right there. The eyes are very important in terms of, right, expression is really all in the eyes. There may be a, a mouth open or someone smiling, but the eyes tell a bigger story. So, Whereas right. Zelensky is the more visionary. Mm -hmm. Also telling a big story are the blood spatters, mm -hmm. minor. Them. Not not heavy, right? But it's dramatic and really punches the point. Yeah. Out. Okay, so those are just mm. some through the course of the year of 2022, through the eyes of Walt Handelsman. But you also opened up the chance for your readers out there to contribute to these. I did, and I I love this story. And here's the story. So I, I did these cartoon caption contests in New York as well. And our readership there was hundreds of thousands of people at Newsday when I first started. And we did a few cartoon caption contests and we had like 50 to 70 entries. And when I came down, I told the paper, hey, we could try this cartoon caption contest thing because it's kind of fun here. And I've always known that people in Louisiana, not just in New Orleans, but the state, have an incredible sense of humor. Mm -hmm. they, they revel in their sense of humor. They're not shy about it. And I think the people in New York, either they weren't interested in the caption contest, which is fine, or they're a little more guarded with who sh they share their sense of humor with, or maybe they're afraid of somebody criticizing. I don't know what it was, but as soon as they, I started doing this and I looked back, we started in uh, 2014 and we immediately had a couple of hundred, 180 people would enter, mm -hmm. which was a lot. And this thing, so it started in 2014, now we've been doing it, and this is uh, 2022. And so... Let's take a look at one Now right it's here. blossomed. Okay, here's one. Now you so see the bubble is, up there. This is Cut. one from earlier in the year. Now somebody's got a <coughs> tiny TV set, which I didn't know there's a crawfish on the, on the bed. <laughs> there's a crawfish. Right. On, on the, the psychiatrist's psychiatrist couch. On the psychiatrist, yeah. <coughs> right. <coughs> and so what is he we saying? Have, we have hundreds of entries come in. This is the fun part is, so the winner was... Um, Sid Herbert, uh, or, or Hebert, from Slidell, and his hilarious punchline was, I keep dreaming that my bath water is full of corn, potatoes, mushrooms, and sausages. <laughs> we, get, we get so many funny entries, right. and we try and run, you know, 30, 20 to 30 finalists every year. So it's okay. very hard to win. Um, we ran a full page of all the winners uh, last Friday, and... Um, 
this year we had over 16,000 entries sent in wow. in 23 contests. So it's growing in popularity. Okay, it's we got time popular. for one more. Let's okay. take, a, take a look at this last one. And this last one was this little alien sitting on Santa's lap. Uh, this was won by Jim Krigler from Baton Rouge. And his punchline was, uh, and can you drop that stuff off at my Roswell address? <laughs> so that, I thought that was very funny as well. <laughs> and it, sometimes it's really hard to pick a winner. They're very yeah. creative. And again, we have somewhere between five to, one time we had a thousand entries in one contest, which is, which is amazing. And I read them all myself. Do you really? I read them all and judge And uh, who all. makes the final choice? Uh, my wife and I, I print out the ones that I think are really funny. So we usually get it down to about 30. And then my wife and I will read them, believe it or not, a Thursday night at midnight when the contest ends. We stay up and we, I read them all and we pick maybe five that are the top five. And then the next morning, I either call my editor or we just decide, let's, let's call this particular person and tell them they won. So people are always very excited and it's my one chance to actually react with the They're readers. They're great. I think, yeah, and it's, it's just a wonderful opportunity it for folks fun. out there to also it is. Have, have their say as well. Okay, so we've taken a look at 2022, coming to the end of it now, um, and here we are entering 2023. Mm -hmm. What do you think you're going to be cartooning about? I think I will be cartooning about the governor's race which is always fun, um, just because, again, any topic that everyone's focused on uh, is always an opportunity for me. And we already have Jeff Landry in, and we're going to see if Kennedy gets in, who else gets in, and who gets out. And so that'll be interesting. Um, we are going to find out whether or not there are going to be charges formal charges against Donald Trump for all the stuff that's been happening with that. Um, we have a new Congress being sworn in, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, there's so many big, giant um, national, and we'll see what happens with, with COVID. We'll see what happens with the economy, and um, we'll see what happens with, you know, Putin and Ukraine and China and... And and, 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 and the new, border, and I mean, there's and so all, many. always something happening locally. And in New Orleans, the selection of the police <laughs> right. chief is going to be an ongoing mm -hmm. issue mm -hmm. too. Right, and the recall election too um, for yeah. the mayor. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it just uh, always something for you to there's sit down, always, there's think always about. Too much. There's too many. <laughs> one of the hardest parts is picking the right topic for the next day because the news okay. comes so quickly now. Right. And so 24/7. Yeah, it's, it's immediate. It's just it's absolutely immediate. immediate. Well, I can't thank you enough for joining us. This My has pleasure. been such a pleasure to have you here. So much fun to look at our year in review through your cartoons. We look forward to next year, too. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good. Thank you yep. all for joining us, too. we got to wrap up right now. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful new year, and we'll see you again next week for Informed Source. Have a good evening. Informed Sources is made possible in part by Susie and Pierre G. Villery. With a continued passion for public television, we are proud to underwrite Informed Sources. Please join us in supporting WYES Television.